Coming up on Network Africa. Prime Minister of Niger Ali Zain in Moscow, Russia for bilateral talks. Kenya's judiciary writes to President William Ruto seeking talks over threats of judges. Thus. Cyclone Bilal brings torrential rain and flooding to the Indian Ocean island nation of Mauritius. Hello and welcome to the program today. I'm Layo Olande. Niger's Prime Minister is in Russia for talks aimed at deepening economic and military ties between the two countries. He arrived on Monday accompanied by the Defence Minister, Salihu Modi, as well as Niger's Ministers of Petroleum and Trade. Paris-based news website Monde Freak reports that the military junta, which is under tough sanctions from its West African neighbours, is seeking to diversify its partnerships. According to more reports, Mr. Zain would also visit Turkey, Iran and Serbia. The junta had always made clear its intention to free itself of Western influence, beginning with the severing of military ties with France. For while in Moscow, Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov confirmed that Prime Minister Zain would not be meeting President Vladimir Putin as it is not on the president's agenda. The United Nations says it is considering delivering aid to Sudan via a new route from South Sudan as aid agencies struggle to access much of the country. Reps from the World Health Organization say they are looking to establish cross-border operations from South Sudan into South and Western Kordofan in Sudan. Well, it's been nine months of war, which the UN says has created a humanitarian crisis and a very difficult working environment, leaving nearly half of Sudan's population in need of aid. More than 7 million people have fled their homes, making Sudan the biggest displacement crisis in the world. In the meantime, about 225 people, including children, have died of starvation in Ethiopia's drought-hit and war-scarred Tigray region since last July. Local officials say almost all the deaths, 209, have been recorded in the rural area of Edgar Abi. In another area, 16 people displaced by the two-year brutal civil war, which ended in 2022, have lost their lives due to hunger. Otigre officials had previously warned that a famine similar to the one Ethiopia witnessed in the mid-80s when hundreds of children and adults died could be on the horizon. However, the federal government denies that a famine is imminent and says it is working to provide aid. According to the UN, more than 20 million people require food aid in Ethiopia due to conflicts, droughts and flooding. We're in Kenya now. The Chief Justice Martha Kume says the judiciary has written to President William Ruto seeking to address concerns he raised against some judges in the country. Addressing a media conference on Monday, Ms. Kume said the attacks against the judiciary were setting up the country for chaos and anarchy, especially if allowed to continue. Well, President Ruto has in recent days mounted a war against the judiciary, accusing some unnamed corrupt judges of working with the opposition to block his government's projects. The president, who came into power in September 2022, has come under intense criticism for introducing new taxes amid a rising cost of living in the country. Opposition leader Raila Odinga has also accused Mr. Ruto of trying to intimidate judges while a group of lawyers staged protests condemning the president's attacks. Which are these judges that are taking bribes so that we can remove them from the system? 
it is not in uh, it is not in good shape or in good taste for the president to just sum everybody together and claim that the whole judiciary is rotten. Mamonga. The same same judiciary that pronounced him as the winner of the election of the year 2022. It is so wrong. You know, a lot of people were killed when the constitution was being made. At that time, I was very young. I was the age of my child. So today, I commemorate the people that lost their lives in the making of this constitution. So for them to blatter the constitution like that, to insult the judiciary, you know, to insult the future of our people. And we must fight it somehow. So I bring my baby today so that he can also understand that the future belongs to him. And a lot of blood was shed for us to enjoy the constitutional rights we enjoy today. We are here to tell the president that when the judiciary protects the people, they're just doing their job. You as the president, you are given the sword to protect the rule of law. So you cannot be seen to be undermining it. So we ask you to keep off the judiciary. Uh, as, as, as lawyers, we will always stand firm. We will stand firm to protect the judiciary so that the executive does not turn into a dictatorship. Well, join us now for more details on this, this story is Cyrus Sombati, a Kenyan journalist joining us from Nairobi. Uh, thank you so much, Cyrus, for your time. Let's begin with uh, President Ruto's reasons behind his threats to the judiciary. How did we get to this point? Well, uh, thank you so much for having me. So uh, we, we understand that uh, the president is feeling so frustrated because of our uh, so many litigations which are ongoing in court, and the judges are actually are siding with the, those who are going to court to oppose the president's uh, moves here and there. So he sounds frustrated, so that's why he's trying to attack the judiciary so that he can, in a way, fear and uh, give him a way of doing his own things. That's what we, we read in all this drama. Well, the Chief Justice says, you know, the judiciary has sent a letter to the president. Has the president responded to this? And what likely resolutions could we see? Well, the, the president has responded today. He was somewhere in, uh, in his own backyard in Western Kenya, and he says that he's ready to meet the, the judiciary for talk. But then uh, that is, again, somehow testing another bad president because... Uh, the opposition is saying that uh, it's not it's not right for them to meet and talk. What are they discussing? Because uh, these are issues which are being raised by Kenyans or anything and who's not happy with whatever is happening in the, in the government or whatever it is. But then now the president himself is saying he's ready to be the chief justice of the judiciary for talk. And uh, we're waiting to see the way forward so far. And how are pundits in the country, you know, reacting to this, you know, this uh, supposed spat between the two bodies of government, I mean, the executive and the judiciary? Well, uh, everyone is uh, sounding kind of uh, shocked by the president, his deputy, and part of his cabinet, the way they are attacking the judiciary. Because they are saying the judiciary is the one actually which puts him in power, because when well, you remember when... Uh, the elections were concluded. There was a there was a petition in court uh, challenging the election. The judiciary, the same judiciary, the one said he was validly ele elected because he put up a case saying he had won, and they are the ones who put him in power. So he has stand again to say that the judiciary is corrupt. So that they are telling him he has a case or he has any evidence to show there is corruption in the judiciary. He should have to go to the judicial service commission and raise it. Same not not attack any public, losing kind of confidence and it's, it's an abuse to democracy. All right, then uh, Cyrus Sombati will have to wait and see if that meeting does take place uh, between the president and uh, ju the judiciary. But thank you so much, Cyrus Sombati, there from uh, Nairobi joining thank us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having this show. Well, Tanzania has announced it had withdrawn approval for neighboring Kenya's flagship carrier to operate a passenger service between the countries starting next week. The Tanzania Civil Aviation Authority, on behalf of the Aeronautical Authority, said the move is in response to Kenya's Civil Aviation Authority denying Air Tanzania the approvals it needed to operate all cargo flights between the two countries. Well, Kenya Airways operates daily flights to Dar es Salaam. However, Nairobi says there should be no cause for alarm as they have jointly agreed that both civil aviation authorities will work together to have the matter resolved amicably within the next three days.
Well, this is the latest trade dispute to plague the East African Community Regional Economic Bloc. Kenya had previously blocked the importation of milk from Uganda and farm produce from Tanzania. And Tanzania also restricted importation of onions to Kenya, leading to skyrocketing prices for the essential commodity. It's the second day of the 19th summit of the non-aligned movement taking place in Uganda. And the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has been speaking on the country's goal for the summit. Permanent Secretary Vincent Bagire Waiswa says Uganda is seeking further cooperation of states within the non-aligned movement, harmonizing and also reinforcing collaboration between member countries. Our key focus area uh, are first and foremost harmonizing and reinforcing uh, collaboration within the movement. As you know, this movement started in 1961. So Uganda will uh, focus on creating cohesion within uh, uh, the movement to ensure that we can work together uh, as a movement uh, for the good of humanity. We shall be listening to the views of the members and uh, NAM has a working method, a working method that prescribes that everything we do must be by consensus. So we expect that if there is consensus that we focus on a certain matter, then so it be. If there is no consensus, then we can't focus on that matter. But so far, we have not subjected the matter of Palestine and Gaza to whether it should be... Uh, the major topic that we discuss. So we have not subjected it to uh, the aspect of consensus. Once we do, uh, we shall inform uh, members of the public. Authorities in Mauritius are now assessing the damage after Cyclone Bilal brought torrential rain and flooding to the Indian Ocean Island nation. The country's meteorological service says the storm was now moving away eastwards, but warns that other environmental risks still exist. At least one person has died in Mauritius and another in Réunion. Well, Mauritius upgraded the cyclone warning to the maximum level for a while, but said the worst danger has now passed. About 100 vehicles were damaged and abandoned by their owners as a result of floods that hit the capital, Port Louis, on Monday. But flood levels substantially decreased on Tuesday and authorities uh, were able to clean up the debris from the streets. Welcome back to the program. Mauritania says it fully supports the declaration made on Palestine at the non-aligned summit holding in Uganda. At the meeting, the representatives of the organization's member states supported a proposal to finalize their declaration on the Palestine issue, first adopted in 2019 at the 18th NAM summit, to take into account the latest conflict escalation in Gaza. Uh, as you know, as also it has been mentioned, we had an extensive discussion on the document. We have, I think, the same document. It should be open for some technical or some uh, update on the technical aspects. Uh, I want just to focus on the political declaration uh, on the issue of Palestine. I think we, we agreed on, on, on this political declaration during our meeting in New York. And we, we raise a three point who has been mentioned by a Palestinian delegation and we fully support this uh, declaration and we are, can assure you also our full support of our delegation and we wish you all the success for the Uganda 19th summit of uh, the NAM. Well, Egyptian Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri has hosted his Chinese counterpart, Ms. Minister Wang Yi, as Mr. Yi began his Africa tour in Cairo, the two officials gave a joint press briefing addressing the ongoing crisis in the Gaza Strip and the escalating tensions in the Red Sea. 
Mr. Shukri called for an immediate ceasefire in the conflict between Israel and Hamas, rejecting the displacement of the Palestinian population in Gaza. He also urged for an extensive aid provision to alleviate the dire situation. Well, Mr. Wang Yi on his part expressed that China is deeply concerned about the recent escalations of violence in the Red Sea between Yemen's Houthis and the U.S. and U.K. Well, over the next few days, Mr. Yi is expected to visit Tunisia, Togo and Côte d'Ivoire. In the meantime, members of South Africa's legal team who represented the country's genocide case against Israel at the International Court of Justice arrived at the O.R. Tambo International Airport in Johannesburg to a hero's welcome. They were greeted by a crowd of pro-Palestinian supporters and protesters welcoming the members of the team in the airport's arrival hall. Well, South Africans sung the praises of the legal team not only for calling for an immediate ceasefire and air access to aid, but also for heightening the plight of Palestinians globally. Well, the meeting was accompanied by demonstrators holding Palestinian flags and placards. We have just returned and the team is here. Uh, as you can imagine, they are very exhausted. It was a very busy week. But they've done us proud and they flew the South African flag very high and they always appreciated at all times the support that you were giving here at home and we're grateful that you could make this sacrifice to come here and meet this team of uh, proudly South African lawyers. I think uh, the best that this country has produced that was able to stand in the world court and make a case for humanity. I know you only saw them appearing in court, but it took a lot of work and um, they finally made it and uh, here we are. Everything has been left uh, to the hands of the judges and we hope that in the next few days they will come out and give out an outcome. I'm here to support and welcome back our A-team, our heroes. We are so, so proud of South Africa as a country, of the Lady Pando, our minister, our president, and all South Africans that are standing with Palestine because we need justice in this world. So to the judges, I say this to the judges, use your consciousness, use your heart. Anyone can see all over social media. That is not something that is hidden. The Holocaust, as evil as it was, was something which was hidden because it was 19, pre-1940. It was not all over social media. This is all over social media. Everyone can see the evil of what is going on. If you as a judge cannot stand up against us, then I question how you could be a judge. So to the judges, I appeal to your goodness, that goodness which exists in every human being's heart. Stand up for what is right. Stand up to the tyranny and oppression of the United Snakes of America. Still in South Africa, President Cyril Ramaphosa has dismissed claims that the ruling party, African National Congress, has been inactive in improving the lives of ordinary South Africans during the 30 years of democracy. According to Mr. Ramaphosa, life has improved under the party's governance, urging people not to hesitate in acknowledging the achievements of democracy. He also emphasized that the ANC's 112th anniversary provides an opportunity for celebration. The president delivered these remarks to party members at the Mbombela Stadium in Impumalanga during the commemoration of the ANC's birthday. The South Africa of today is different and vastly improved from the South Africa of 30 years ago. And that has been brought about by the African National Congress, the ANC has remained loyal to the pursuit of the National Democratic Revolution and also advancing Africa's renaissance. There have been mistakes along the way and there have been missteps because in life, nothing is ever perfect. The anti-transformation forces are converging in pacts. They are forming various pacts. Busbies are all pacts, there's pact that and so forth. 
while at the same time they are seeking to fragment the forces for change through splinter groups and smaller parties that want to contest the ANC. South Africa's finance minister is warning that next month's budget will be a difficult one as the nation's ability to service its growing debt remains a challenge. Enoch Godongwana will table the annual budget in late February when he's expected to announce more details on the National Treasury's plan to arrest ballooning debt. As the Treasury warns of a higher debt trajectory over the next two years, independent economist Professor Bonke Dumisa stresses the need for a zero budget basis to stabilize public finances and also accelerate growth. It's very easy to be very, to look, uh, uh, look very concerned and uh, a very responsible citizen when you say, let us increase this 350 runs and let us move to the basic income grant without actually saying where that money is going to come from. So the government will have, I'm, I'm not so sure whether I'm comfortable saying that they, they must raise all over one, all, 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 over 1.2 trillion rents over, over the over the over, no over the next uh, three years but there is a need to raise money just to keep afloat the amount that we can borrow then that is one which we, mu we must debate and the former minister of finance Ubabuti Tomboin once said that South Africa must move to a zero budget basis. All the trade unions and public servants did not hear anything about that thing. They simply said, forget it. We do not want that thing. If ever we can move to a zero-based budgeting system, then you can pu pull out a lot of money, uh, items that are there to find certain things which we can do without and then in that in that way maybe we can start with living within our means as it is south africa is living beyond its means if ever it was a, a private person an individual it would have been declared bankrupt long time ago even the debt collect, even the debt councillors would not be well, the U.S. Navy continues its search for two Navy SEALs who vanished off Somalia's coast. Ships and aircraft have been deployed in the search operation that's underway in the Gulf of Aden. The SEALs went missing on Thursday night last week as they attempted to intercept a dhow that was carrying a weapons shipment. One of the SEALs fell into the rough waters while boarding the dhow, prompting the second SEAL to jump in after him for a rescue attempt. Well, neither of them have resurfaced. And finally, on the program, South African comedian Trevor Noah has made history by being the first African to win an Emmy in the Outstanding Talk Series category for his talk show, The Daily Show. He is also the first black person to win an Emmy in this category since it was introduced in 2015. And elated, Trevor Noah commented that it feels like being part of a winning football team. The comedian has been nominated for the Emmy category five times before, but his sixth nomination, which he earned in his final season hosting The Daily Show, finally secured him the win. Well, Mr. Noah shocked many of his fans when he announced his exit from The Daily Show in September 2022 after seven years uh, being the host. The search is now on for his replacement, uh, continues, the, the search for his replacement continues. Well, Noah has another Emmy Award, which he earned in 2017 for an outstanding short form varieties series. The Emmy Awards are the most prestigious honors in the U.S. television industry. And that's it on the program today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Layo Olarindi.